It's opening day week here on the podcast, and to help you get ready for the 2024 season, I got my postcast partner, Grant McCauley, joining the show today to get you ready for opening day. All that on today's episode of Locked On Brave, so let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out my written work at bravestoday.com. Follow the podcast on social media at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. If you're new, watching on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. We're just a little under 300 subscribers away from 10,000. You can help me get there by hitting the thumbs up button on this video. If you're listening on the audio forum, thank you so much as well. Make sure you leave me a five-star review, whether it be Apple, Spotify, wherever it is that you consume Lockdown Braves. Thank you so much for your support of the podcast. Getting ready for a big season here in 2024. I got Grant. I'm going to bring him in in a second as we preview the upcoming seasons. We're just a couple of days away from opening day. Before we do that, though, I want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, let's not waste any more time. It is opening day week, and we got Grant joining me on the show today. Obviously, Grant, my postcast partner, going to be here with you all year long. So, Grant, we're there. I mean, we have we are just about made it. It is time for opening day. Yeah, the countdown got down to single digits all of a sudden, and those Grapefruit League games, well, they went away. So I'm excited about the games that count, the stats that count, and watching guys really just start to – you know, follow up from 2023, and as we know, and we talked about an awful lot, this is a team that comes into this season with a lot of expectations, one particular expectation, I should say, and that's to win the whole thing. So we're going to see if the Atlanta Braves of 2024 can get that job done. Yeah, absolutely. That is where we are at with this organization. Credit to the front office, everything that they've done. But it feels good as a fan, and I am definitely a fan in that category, to go into a year where your team is expected to win a World Series. Their goal is to win a World Series. It's no longer just get to the postseason. It's to win a World Series. And so I'm excited for this year coming up for the Braves. Like you said, I'm excited to get to some real games. This spring training for the Braves, you know, other than the Jared Kelnick stuff, Chris Sale, a little scare from Ron Acuna Jr. Mm-hmm. Look, this lineup has been set for weeks now, it feels like. And I am ready to get to some real games where these stats count. Cannot wait for the season to happen. Grant, I want to ask you, though, what do you look forward to the most going into a new baseball season? I know you do a lot of work and, and covering the Braves and stuff like that, but <laughs> just from the baseball fan in you, what do you look forward to the most? I think the most beautiful thing about a baseball season, and it's for somebody who did a lot of play-by-play in the minor leagues as well, is every game is a new opportunity, a new day, a blank canvas. When you're doing play-by-play, that part is kind of fun because I still think it's the art of broadcasting as well, which is kind of fun. And that's just on a personal perspective. But I talked to Spencer Strider a week ago and I asked him a little bit about, okay, well, opening day against the Philadelphia Phillies. I know the focus is on today or the, the day that it is that you're trying to win and moving forward. But is there anything that you think about from the last couple of seasons ending in Philadelphia? And he said, you know, not really. If there was something we could do on day one that would atone for, you know, the last couple of years, then that would be great. But that's just not the case. And, Seeing the focus be on the one day at a time mantra or mentality in getting to their bigger goal, which is winning a World Series, I think it's just it's cool to see the guys with that kind of laser sharp focus. And I, I mean, I'm talking about Spencer Strider, who you may already know is pretty intense and pretty focused and pretty cerebral about everything he does. But I think that it just underscores why you should be, I think, excited about a the possibilities of this Braves team because there are so many clubs out there wondering. Uh, what are our guys going to do this year? Can they sneak into the playoffs? Will they have a 500 or better record? That's a, an, a, an accomplishment for some clubs. The Braves, it's a much higher expectation level. But I do think that there's just a lot of excitement that comes with opening day, a lot of excitement that just comes with all 30 teams coming in with the same record for a minute and then seeing how it all plays out over the next six months. I just look forward to the journey. I feel like we're at the bottom of the mountain right now. 
Will the Braves be the team at the top of the mountain planting that flag in about seven or nearly eight months? We'll find out. Yeah, I love that answer. Love that response because it's tough for me with the way the last two seasons have ended where a lot of fans and myself too have kind of gotten to the point where regular season doesn't matter as much. It's what you do in the postseason, but it's just hard for me to get over that because I love the journey. Use the word that you said. That, that's what I talk about a lot here. I love the journey. It's 162. It's virtually every day you wake up and it's a new game. It's a new opportunity. And that's why I love baseball so much. I mean, I, I don't know how NFL fans do it. You got one game right. a week. You even got some bye weeks every now and then. I mean, we wake up every day and we get to watch baseball. We get to watch our, our favorite team play a game. And that's what I'm, I think makes baseball baseball so special. And over 162, there's stories that are going to come up, new stories that will be written, new storylines. And it's just, am I, you know, biased and honest opinion makes baseball the greatest sport that there is. Um, now, moving toward the Braves and coming up this year, once we get the games going, I want to just look at the roster. Don't really want to reflect too much on what happened in the offseason, but I do just want to ask you one more time. Is this the most complete roster in baseball, and is it maybe the most complete roster in Braves history? When you look at it top to bottom, there's just not a lot of holes. I mean, we talk about some a question mark in left field. What is Orlando Arcia going to look like this year? You know, what is that fifth starter spot going to look like? As you kind of alluded to earlier, some teams are just hoping, oh, do we have one or two good starters that we can compete? What do we look like at the top of our order? What do we look like four, five, six in the order? That's not really a question for this Braves team. And, and it's, you know, your knowledge of Braves baseball goes back much further than mine. It's just hard for me to remember, you know, maybe other than last year, seeing a roster that is just so complete and so deep in the lineup, in the rotation, in the bullpen. It truly has to be. And I did a, a call on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game here in Atlanta on Tuesday talking about, all right, well, go find me another club of the other 29 teams that is as complete as the Atlanta Braves is. And I think that that's kind of part of the expectation and the allure of this franchise. And, and it's a testament to the kind of winning that they've done that you do look around that infield and see, okay, well, everything's set here. Behind the plate, we're set. On the mound, you have to feel pretty good about the starting rotation that you've assembled. You've added to a bullpen that was also, I think, m far more good than bad last year and is projected to be one of, I believe, the top three bullpens according to fan graphs, heading into 2024. And oh, by the way, hey, welcome back, Jesse Chavez. It'll be fun to see him be a part of this whole mix. But it's not just the the numbers on the field, but it's the quality of the team. And oh, by the way, I think the Braves have a pretty good outfield led by the best player in baseball. You just start to go down this checklist, and you can't find me another team that yeah, they're going to have superstars. They may have multiple superstars. In the case of the Los Angeles Dodgers, they got a very compelling lineup. But I just don't know that there's anybody who's built with the depth of the Braves lineup that can also say, we've got a pretty good pitching pitching staff and a chance to do some really special things. Health is always going to be the story. It's always going to be that variable that you can't predict it. You don't know when it's going to happen to you. Brian Snitker says it every year. Nobody's immune to it. We're going to need all these pitchers that we've you've know, gathered up and more to make it through the season and to do what we want to do in October. So Again, it's a lot of it's about the journey. A ton of it for the Braves is just going to be about being healthy because if they are, there is not another club in Major League Baseball with a talent level one through 26 on their roster at any given time that's going to stack up with the Atlanta Braves, in my opinion. Yeah, mine, mine as well. I mean, again, we're, we're obviously a little biased here on a Braves podcast, but sure. you know, the, the Dodgers, you know, the Phillies are going to be a really good team mm -hmm. as well. You know, the Astros and, and some teams in the American League sure. will compete. The Orioles are a good young team, but be good, right? Yeah, but it's just you, you look at it top to bottom on this Braves roster. And I mean, it's just it's hard to really see a team on paper. And this game's not played on paper and things right. are going to change throughout the course of a year. Injuries are going to happen. Regression is going to possibly happen for a lot of Braves hitters that had career years last season. But it's just I, again, I can't think of a, a time going into the season in my years of watching the Braves where I felt more confident mm -hmm. that this roster is more complete. And maybe that's setting us up for failure because in baseball, once you feel great and you think you got everything figured out, that's usually when when things hit you hard. But it's just again, it's it's really hard to look at this lineup and see how they can't compete and put themselves in a position to win a World Series. And that's the goal this year. Yep. And that's what we want to talk about next is how do the Braves get there? What are we looking for throughout this season to see the Braves get back to the postseason and win a World Series? We'll discuss that here next. 
March Madness is here, so is opening day. But for all you basketball lovers out there, that is the biggest moment in all of college baseball ha- or of college basketball happening right now. Be part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Prize Picks offers injury insurance, so your player gets hurt in the first quarter or the first half of the game, doesn't come back, that won't count against you in your entry, and it will stay alive, and that player will be removed. Prize Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts and Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my entry in just under 60 seconds. And with opening day week coming up, there's going to be plenty of chances to get in on all the MLB action where all you got to do is pick more or less on your favorite teams and players. That's it. It's really that simple. Just pick two to six players or a groups of players and decide if you think they'll have more or less on strikeouts, home runs, RBIs, hits, all of that. You got Spencer Strider on opening day. We'll see what the what the pick more or less will be with him on his strikeouts, but you want to get in on that, you can do so over on prize picks. All you have to do, download the app, use code locked on MLB, all lowercase for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Again, download the app and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. All right, Grant, I want to get back into our discussion here. I did my podcast a couple last week talking about my top five storylines for this upcoming season. I want to know what are some for you? What are some things that you're really watching for this year? I'll go ahead and tell you, and you can you can take this one as well, because I think it should be the top storyline for just about every Braves fan. It's Ron Acuna Jr. and Spencer Strider. What can they do? What kind of history can they make this year? I think they are the two most two of the most exciting players in baseball. Obviously, Otani and, and Betts and others up there as well. A lot of young stars in the game coming up. But for my money, and again, being maybe a little bit biased on a Braves podcast, I think both of those guys, I used this in our postcast all last year, I think they're must-watch television. I think when Ronald Acuna Jr. is up at the plate, you got to stop what you're doing to watch him. When Spencer Strider's on the mound, you got to stop and watch him. So that's my number one storyline for this year. But I want to know, what are you keeping your eye on the most? Which storyline are you most intrigued by? I mean, Ronald Acuna Jr.'s encore to what he did last year has me just fascinated and, and tantalized by the possibilities of what can this guy do? When he showed up for spring training, it wasn't like he spent the winter just taking it easy and kind of coasting off of that 40 70 season and all the history he made and the huge stats he put up. No, the dude went and played winter ball. He came to spring training early. I know he had the little scare with the knee after the rundown, but everything is good. All those boxes have been checked. And I think he's just primed for what could be a season in which he's kind of the only guy that can do what he's done. I mean, historically speaking, he is the only guy, but you know, he was asked about, okay, well, what other goals do you have now that you've done 40 70? That never happened before. What about 50 50? And he just kind of smiled and shrugged his head and said, I'm, I'm not going to put any limitations on what it can be. He's also not going to sit there and tell you what stats he's going after. But Ron Lacuna Jr. flirting with a 50-50 season would certainly be exciting. It is completely within the realm of possibility, even though this sounds like an absurd statement on its face because of what he did last year and the fact that I think that that power and that swing, he he's going to have a 50 home run season. And imagining it coming out of the leadoff spot is also wild. But uh, so let's let's go Ronald Acuna Jr. 1A because I think he's the best player in baseball and he's going to go out there and hopefully show us more reasons why in 2024. Spencer Strider, though, I mean, the best strikeout pitcher in baseball, one of the best strikeout seasons as far as Ks per nine in the history of baseball by any starting pitcher. And then you think about, okay, well, he decided to add to his arsenal. He's diversifying that portfolio of pitches. He's now got a curveball in addition to that changeup and the fastball and slider that, that were the two most swung and missed at pitches in baseball last year, I mean, I said this on, on social media earlier today, that to say that Spencer Strider is primed for a Cy Young season might become an annual discussion for Braves fans every spring training, regardless of whether or not he finally gives up some runs in that final start. Those two guys I had to put right up on the top. But let me throw in one more name that I think that it could be a magical season for. And it's not just limited to this guy, but I've been talking about it all winter and I'm going to do it again here. I think Michael Harris II could have a career year this year that really like just sets him into that next level where you all of a sudden realize, yeah, the Braves have a superstar in Ronald Acuna Jr. in right field, but that guy, they've got a center. There are going to be a lot of clubs that would love to have that guy hitting first, second, or third in their lineup. That's how good I think Michael Harris can be. He batted 335 from June the 7th on last year, OPSing over 900. He's a 2020 player a year ago, just about. 
Uh, and I think he could be a 30-30 player. And once he gets into his prime, uh, as his power just seems to be coming on and being added to in each of the last couple of years, and he's just a special player defensively. So you put all that together, and all of a sudden you got a 23-year-old superstar in the making out there in center field. I'm excited to see what Michael Harris II does this year, and then we'll see You know what the rest of the Braves were able to put together offensively. I think that this lineup, again, much like Ronald Acuna Jr. said, don't set any limitations because what they did last year, they have, uh, as they say, run it back and brought back most of this group. Can they push another 300 home run season? I would not put it past them. And in fact, uh, as expectations go, I think that might be one that a lot of people have is uh, power, power and more power up and down the Braves lineup on display this year. It's what makes it so dangerous. It's another thing we talked about on the postcast a lot last year. It's just power from top to bottom. Anybody can get you. I'm right there with you on the Michael Harris train. I think he's in for a big season. Like you said, Acuna is a superstar. Mm -hmm. I think Michael Harris is going to show that he is at least a star in this game yeah. more nationally. I think he's going to get to an all-star game this year. I think he's going to have, I'm not going to go 30, 30 this year, but at 25, 30, 25, mm -hmm. 25, I think it's certainly uh, within the realm of possibility. I mean, I think he's going to have more than that in his career, which I think is what you were, you were yeah. saying there, but. And I mean, think about it this way too, with Michael Harris, uh, just to throw this in there. I mean, he started so slowly last year mm -hmm. and to get from basically 2020 was where he was right on the cusp of last year to 25, 25. That's what, one homer and one steal a month? I think Michael Harris can do that. Yeah, no, man, absolutely, and I think he can. I mean, it is, it is crazy. We talked about it. I mean, he was, by OPS, one of the worst hitters in baseball for a month yep. and a half last year, and you know, I think the back issues and, and the slow start had a lot to do with that, but once he got going, I mean, you look at those numbers that you mentioned, he was one of the best players in baseball for a, a long stretch last season, and moving up in the lineup, I think you're going to see some of those counting stats go up as well. So you're expecting a big year for Michael Harris. Maybe he wins that gold glove this year as well. Something I think he'll do at least one time in his career. So pumped up for that. One thing I got to ask you though, we talked about Acuna and the numbers and the history that he could make. I know you were the 40, 40 tracker last year. Are you doing a 50, 50 tracker this season? I don't know that I am uh, bold enough to put a 50, 50 tracker out there. I I'm this close to it, I guess, but <laughs> I am going to look to run a tracker that will keep up with the home runs and the stolen bases because I think it's a story regardless. I mean, 40-40 was a goal at one point for Ron Lacuna Jr. He blew past that last year with the season that he put in. The greatest 40-40 season of all time. That may seem kind of obvious, but you go look at the guys that did the 40-40 thing. There were some pretty good years that happened there. I think Ronald's was the best year of any of the five men that were able to pull that off. So, I am going to track it, but I'm not going to go 50-50 just yet. But if he gets there, I'll make sure that the graphic is properly updated to really commemorate the occasion. Yeah, it'll be special. Like you said, I, I think he can definitely do it, especially we saw him you know, take a, an approach at the end of last year to get those home runs. He needed 11 in the final month of the year just to get over 40, and he got there. So yeah. certainly uh, not going to, to put any limitations on Ronald and what he can do. Now let's shift to the team focus here. We know we talked about it. This is World Series aspirations. Teams talking about World Series or bust. Is there anything specifically in the regular season that you'll be watching for that will perhaps tell you if this team's more equipped for the postseason run this time? Anything in particular? You know, do you think you'll, they'll look to manage innings of Sale and maybe others? Do you think position players will be given some time off? I mean, it's really hard to 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 look at what happens in the regular season. I, I thought last year's team was more perfectly set up for the postseason than, than any other time. They didn't strike out a lot, which is what you, you look for in an offense. You know, when it come postseason time, are they going to, they have issues striking out? That wasn't the case for this offense last year. They had the highest average in baseball and also mm -hmm. uh, were in the top 10 of, of not striking out as well. So uh, again, it's hard to really, you know, look over 162 and, and point to something, but, you know, is there anything in particular over the course of this journey that you'll be looking at to set them up for the postseason? No, it's, it's interesting because I know everybody looks at it with the idea of, okay, well, maybe if there was you know, a little more rest day for this position player or that position player. You know, Matt Olson has said it time and again. is like, I like knowing that I come in, I'm playing every day, I'm in this spot of the lineup, and I can go out there and get my work done. And if I need a day, I'll let Brian Snicker know that I need a day. And that's how SNIT allows this you know clubhouse dynamic to, I think, foster that desire to be out on the field above all else. And I'm not saying play hurt and, and through injuries that you shouldn't be playing through. They'll evaluate that stuff as it comes along. But I think there's a lot of value in the fact that you have guys who do want to be out there every single day. 
asked Austin Riley about his slow start last year, and he said, well, you know, regardless of where I'm hitting or whatever the case is, I know I'm going to be in the lineup every day, and I know I can't help the team or get out of this slump sitting on the bench. So I feel like that there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, both sides of the coin can be true. Maybe the occasional day would be helpful for some guys, but just because you got a day off in June doesn't mean you're going to be fresher in October. I'm not a believer in that. And if anything, I think the Braves would love to have fewer days off when they get to October somehow, but I don't know how you solve for, for X on the playoff rest thing. I know that's been talked about a lot. We're not going to solve it here on this edition of the postcast, but I really look for more of the same from the Braves because I feel like, you know, 2022 was a crazy, you know, chase down the Mets and finally overtake them at the very end of the season, get into the postseason. And it felt a little bit different last year. I just felt like they went through the whole progression of the entire season, including getting off to their best start in quite a while and were right where they wanted to be. And then they had to kind of wait around. And I don't know how you fix that again, yeah. but I can't point to anything in the regular season that I, I'm, I think that they have to do differently than they've done in years past be careful with Chris sale. I think that, you know, he'll be able to dictate a lot of that based on how he's feeling and his communication with the team. They're not asking him or Charlie Morton to go out there and throw seven or eight innings. Every time out, you've built a bullpen behind these guys that can really allow you to get in there in the sixth inning and figure out the matchups that you need to, because you've got an offense. It's probably going to be putting up better than five runs per night based on what they did a year ago. It's just, Again, this is an incredibly well-built club. I think they're certainly built well for the marathon of the regular season, and I think that they've got to find their way to put it all together in the postseason, and that is going to be the big challenge for them, and they know that. Yeah, yeah. and again, we don't have the the answer here for that. Uh, even last year, I thought they did a good job with the, with the pitching staff, and, and in fact, of just giving guys an extra day of rest when they needed to, when you had those off days, and utilizing that. I, I thought they did a good job of that. It's just... You know, unfortunate. I, I think they even, you know, kind of somewhat slow played Max Freed coming back to make sure that they gave him plenty of time to get ready and then had the unfortunate blister injury. Charlie Morton, unfortunately, gets hit, hurt at the wrong time, yeah. which, you know, it wasn't the pitching's fault. I know we've been all over that. The, the offense <laughs> didn't right. show up, but I thought right. they did everything they could last year and they had plenty of time to prepare for the postseason. It's just what do you do with those five days off? And I'll, I'll ask you this, and I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is. But I don't think the answer is to just give away the division and go into that wild card mm. series. I, I don't think that's going to help either because that brings its own dangers. You have one or two bad games in a three game set and you're out just like that. Right. And, and that's the thing is like they're not looking to give away what they feel like is a firm seat at the table for a wild card entry into the postseason. Now, if that's the way it plays out, hey, that's the way it plays out. But you don't want to start taking, I, I feel like, your foot off the accelerator or trying to change the way in which you're competing so that you can kind of slide into it. Like teams just don't think that way. They are trying to go out there and win every single day. Does it work out all the time? No. Did it work out uh, basically two out of every three times for the Atlanta Braves in a regular season last year? It did. And that's when it, why I felt like this was a team that was ready. This was a team that spent its off days trying to simulate as much as possible you know, facing competition and getting themselves out there and taking it much more seriously than they did in 2022 when everybody was experiencing that layoff for the first time among the higher seed teams. But it it didn't work. And, and of all the things to not work, it was the offense. And if you had asked me, what are you worried about in the postseason for the Atlanta Braves by the different position groups or offensively, defensively, or pitching? Offense, I don't know, would not have been the first thing I said. I might not have even mentioned it because I just took it kind of for granted that this was a club that knew how to hit and they were unable to hit against Philadelphia. And we all saw the result. Yeah. We're all still kind of scratching our heads at that one. The, the most, yep. the best, most powerful offense this game's maybe ever seen, not just last year, but in the history of the game and just couldn't figure it out after that five day layoff. So again, the Braves are going to go for it. They're going to win that division. They're going to go for that top seed in those buys once again. And if that happens, they're just going to have to figure out a way mm -hmm. to get the offense going from the jump or maybe get a little bit easier matchup in the first round. The Phillies are a really yeah. good team and the Braves have had to draw team. them. They've had to draw them in the first round coming off those by, buys the first two times. So uh, again, I want to face the Phillies. I want to get over that hump and get past them, but that is a really tough matchup in the first round when you're coming in off five day off, off five days being pretty cold. Uh, next, I want to just ask a couple of prediction questions for Grant, what he's looking for this year, get some of his thoughts on that. We'll talk about the Jesse Chavez news and more here next. 
Say goodbye to busted of brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. If your bracket is busted, they have tournament props like how many number one seeds will make the final four or the worst seed to make the final four. Or if you're like me, you've moved on, you're ready for baseball season. They got stuff for that too. They have team specific specials like, get this one, Grant, Will, Ronald, Riley, and Olsen each hit 40 plus home runs. Ooh. You can take advantage of that line over on FanDuel.com slash locked on. They also have season long specials like the total number of no hitters thrown, the number of times a player will hit three plus home runs. You can see all of those fun lines over on FanDuel.com slash locked on. Also make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash play safe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Grant, I'm not going to make you give some hard predictions here. Uh, as I know those can be awkward, we're talking about a 162-game season. Sure. One thing I was going to ask you, though, is to name a player that you think is going to have a big year. I think you already gave me that in, in Michael Harris. On the pitching side, maybe uh, we talked about Strider there. Any other pitchers that you think maybe could have a, a big year kind of unexpected? Well, I'm curious about this Reynaldo Lopez move to put him back in the rotation. And clearly, and as you and I have talked about before, you knew they had to have a plan for a guy that they signed to a three-year, $30 million contract. But based on the success in the bullpen, I really felt like they were just looking to get another lockdown reliever. But if you are going to you know, satisfy your curiosity and give them this opportunity, ramping him up in spring training, have him ready to go out of the gate, that was the way to do it. Can he unlock something or find some success and some consistency that he wasn't able to the last time that he was a starter four or five years ago? The Braves are going to try to find out. And does that necessarily solve the fifth starter spot for the whole year? I think we learned last year that you may need a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, a ninth, a tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, so on and so forth. You may need a lot of depth to get through the season, but I am interested based on the stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, having some success as a big league pitcher, even in the bullpen, does that translate to more confidence and more uh, success as a starter than you had prior to that? Maybe so. So I'll go Ronaldo Lopez as somebody I think could be a sneaky pick to perhaps have a pretty good year. Yeah, and it could come as a starter right. or as the reliever. Right. <laughs> I mean, it gets to the point where, you know, the Braves are just very fortunate in the rotation and and he moves back to the bullpen. Maybe A.J. Smith, Shaver, Hurston, Walter proves that they're ready at some point, or maybe they just want to manage Lopez's, you know, workload because he hasn't been a starter in a while. And he moves back to the bullpen. He suddenly becomes one of the top relievers in the bullpen. So, yes, I think he could have a major impact in many ways. Or if you get to the postseason and you don't need a fifth starter – and yeah. he goes back to the bullpen. Big he arm. Could be, yeah, and another good dynamite arm that you can have coming out of the bullpen in the postseason as well. So I like that. That's a good pick as well. All right, let's touch on the news of the day because Braves le legend Jesse Chavez is back. We know that. And now we know he's going to be on the opening day roster. Unfortunately, Jackson Stevens takes the cut there as the Braves outright him. But Grant, Jesse Chavez is back. The most uh, predictable thing I think anybody could have imagined happening. I mean, once he was out there again, you just had to wonder, I mean, how long is it going to take for this phone call to go on? We got a brief report that he might be signing somewhere else. That turned out to not happen. And then once he was out there and truly available, I think that Jesse Chavez looks at Atlanta as a, a home for him. He's been a nomad throughout his career. He's played for a lot of different teams. I posted the splits, though, for Jesse. I mean, it's undeniable how much success he has had in Atlanta, much of that in the past few years in his most recent stints with the team. He is universally respected and appreciated for everything that he brings to this club and the fact that if you want to look at last year, and I had somebody try to tell me, oh, well, Jesse Chavez is just a guy that's just he's just lucky. He's just giving up line drives everywhere. They're just right at people. You go look at his stat cast data last year. That was not the case whatsoever. This is, if there is such a thing as a crafty righty, because I know they all get called crafty left-handers, Jesse Chavez is that guy. And his, his, his hard work and his dedication – I think it would be fun to see him get one last great ride all the way through October with the Atlanta Braves, a team that he helped win a World Series a couple of years ago. Yeah, I'd love to see his hat selection at the parade uh, uh, again this year. That would be, that would be great to see. 
<laughs> um, and another big bit of news on the day as well. Jordan Montgomery. Grant, we're two days away from opening day. Jordan Montgomery finally finds a deal. He signs for one year, $25 million deal uh, with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Got a vesting option for $25 million. It's free agency this offseason. It's been a little weird, Grant, but Jordan Montgomery finally finds a home. Blake Snell late as well. Uh, it's been a weird free agency. Yeah, the Giants got the Boris two-pack. And then, you know, as Scott Boris is an equal opportunity guy, somebody else in the division got one of his other clients. So I, I'm excited to see what this does for an Arizona team that was one of the great stories in baseball last year, getting a legitimate lefty option at the start of their rotation. I think they kind of envisioned Madison Bumgarner having more of an impact on this club than he did. But Jordan Montgomery is coming off a year in which he showed people he can post when it counts. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. And also, by the way, how about winning the World Series with one club and signing with the other club in the offseason? Yeah. That doesn't happen too terribly often either. Yeah, and sorry, real quickly, I want to ask you one more thing. What does this mean for Max Fried? Now, I think Max Fried's a different case, but you look at Blake Snell, just won a Cy Young. He had to take a short deal. You look at Jordan Montgomery, just won a World Series. He has to take a short deal. Max Fried looking at this and maybe getting a little worried about his upcoming free agency? I don't know if it's worry, but I mean, you have to take note of it. And Freed's a smart guy. He's a Braves player rep. I mean, he understands the intricacies and the, you know, I guess the the pitfalls and perhaps the wins that you can find in free agency in terms of finding that new contract. But I think that Freed, you know, from from talking to him in spring training and everything that I've heard about him discussing his free agency and really putting it off to the side, he is focused on the here and now. I know he loves being in Atlanta. I know he loves the team that he's playing with and the guys that he's come up with and grown into, the big league pitcher that he is. And I also know that he would be an incredible asset for the Braves moving forward. So I think there should be some motivation, maybe on both sides, to kind of look at it and say, okay, given recent events, maybe there is a deal to be had here that would be a little bit different than trying to sign a position player to a multi-year deal when he's walking into free agency. Yeah, that'd be a great opening day surprise if the Braves and, and Max Fried could make that happen. Certainly not taking Morning. that bet over on, on FanDuel, but yeah, whenever it may happen, would certainly love to have Max Fried stand around or stay around. Uh, Grant, we are Raphael Belliard days away from opening day. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for joining, uh, joining me here on the podcast. Looking forward to doing the postcast with you all year long. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta, where you'll see that postcast of me and Grant McCauley. You'll get it here in your audio feed of Locked On Braves as well. But that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.